In this week's program, we'll stop in Afton and meet the candidates running for office. In Wyandotte, we'll enjoy bluegrass music and barbecue chicken. Later in the program, we'll speak with the folks from PinMac and learn how to improve your odds of getting hired at any job. All this and more here on the Community Focus Update. Welcome to our 51st episode of the Community Focus Update. I am your host, local broadcaster Michael Woodruff, and thank you very much for following us. Each week we bring you up-to-date information of what's going on here in Ottawa County, and we are broadcasting from the uh, town park here in City uh, North Miami. So we're pretty stoked about that. All the kids are in school, so there's no kids playing right at the moment, but I'll probably go over there and play later. Before we dive into what's going on around Ottawa County, let's talk about our sponsors. Owned and operated by Kenny and Diane Wyford, K-Dog Online Auction features brand new liquidated items at the fraction of store prices. If you have a Facebook profile, you can be a member of our group and bid. Auctions begin each Friday night at 6 and end on Saturday at 6. To get a deal on someone else's extravagant decision and change of mind, visit facebook.com slash group slash K-Dog Auctions. Elegance Unleashed Owner Dib Swank offers a full service salon for you and your family. They offer a wide variety of services from haircuts to pedicures. And due to easing of state and local COVID-19 rules, Elegance Unleashed will be taking one-on-one -on -one appointments. Children and the disabled will be accompanied by one adult. As a safety caution, all clients are asked to wear surgical masks, and if you don't have a mask, one will be provided. Deb wants to thank everyone for their past patronage and looks forward to returning uh, and new customers. For an appointment call 918-544-6976. Up on April 6th at 6 p.m. will be our live coverage of the various elections throughout Ottawa County. During this time, we'll give you the numbers as they are counted. We'll also uh, interview uh, candidates and also we will be featuring memory montages from communities throughout Ottawa County to include Pitcher. Co current sponsors include Unity of Joplin, Elegance Unleashed, Nowhere on 66 Barbecue, Extreme Gaming, a Route 66 Truck and Trailer, and the Ottawa County Farmers Market. In addition to video games, Extreme Gaming at 1915 North Main in Miami is now offering movie rentals. And each Tuesday is new release day, and with over 1,200 titles in stock, there's something for everyone. To learn more, give Extreme Gaming a call at 918-542-7529 or on phone or in person. Be sure to thank them for sponsoring the Community Focus Updates. Coming up on April 30th at 6 p.m., it's CASA's Cherish the Child Cruise Night live stream. Hosted by yours truly, this Facebook Live will feature the sights and sounds of a community cruise night on Route 66. As Witcher Media Management raises money for CASA of Northeast Oklahoma, 50% of all advertising revenue will be donated to CASA, and 100% of all individual Eventbrite tickets will be forwarded to CASA. For more information, visit our website, woodruffmediamanagement.com slash events. Current and sponsors include Unity of Joplin, Elegance Unleashed, Nowhere on 66 Barbecue, and Route 66 Truck and Trailer, Extreme Gaming, and the Ottawa County Farmer's Market. If you'd like to advertise or be a sponsor of the Community Focus Update, it's only $10 an episode during the COVID-19 pandemic. You can email me, michael, at woodruffmediamanagement.com with the word advertising in the subject line. On Saturday, March 27th, Afton residents had an opportunity to meet with local candidates running for Board of Trustee and Town Treasurer. Organizer Jeannie Sears explains. Because I care about this town and I've got uh, some friends that are running and I just feel like we need some unity here and it's the only way this town's going to grow is if everybody gets along and comes together and, and we build it, rebuild it. So, uh, I just, I'm bad about volunteering and so here I am. I encourage you to get out and vote on April 6th. Um, you can 
don't know your candidates, uh, ask a friend, go by their house, find out where they live, uh, get to know them and make your own choice and uh, do what's best for this town. During this time, we worked the room and asked each candidate why they were running for office. And while the answers varied, each one offered an insight. Well, I moved here in August and Afton needs to grow. We need more business. We need more for our kids to do. Um, I want us to get a splash pad. I would love for Afton to have a library. I want a grocery store. I get tired of going to Grove and Vanita and Miami and giving them our tax dollars when I buy groceries. Um, I see things and I see changes we need and I want us to work together not just as a town council, but as a town, as one big team, and make Afton grow. I'm ready so I can continue to work hard for the town, bringing in grants to help our accounts so we can purchase different things like for the water plant and sewer plant. Um, and I also want to take the opportunity to thank our voters and to get out on April 6th and vote. Your account matters. I see areas in our town where we need policy, we need procedure, we need accountability, uh, and that's where my background drives. I uh, retired after 23 years with Oklahoma Department of Corrections. That's what I ran on for 23 years. Uh, we need a public safety system in this town uh, right now. I've already written the policies that will be our new police department. Uh, once we get that done, We'll have our PD in place. That'll bring new businesses into town. That'll raise our tax base. We'll be able to do more things for the people here. I am running to provide Afton with transparency and to see our community grow and thrive and provide more opportunities for our children. Um, I and myself have a child that I am choosing to raise in Afton, so hopefully we can get some more programs in here to provide fun and have something for our future children to do. I am running because I want to better the town and make improvements and have integrity, accountability. I just think we need to be better. I've lived here my whole life and I've seen it just go downhill. I think there's a lot of potential in Afton if we just use it and we all get in. We need a unity and get together on the same thing. I am running for office this year for a better community. I want to see transparency. I want to see better communication between residents of, the, of Afton and the board members. I want better streets, better signage for the streets, uh, cleaner ditches to allow the water to flow so our community doesn't flood. Uh, I want to bring back a community of togetherness. My great-grandfather was on the Afton City Board. My great-grandmother was on the Afton City Board. And my uncle was on the City Board. Uh, I have always been a part of the city. My first job was with the City of Afton and Cherokee Nation during the Cherokee Nation summer program for youth. They no longer have that. I'd like to bring that back. Um, I think it will instill a work ethic in our younger generations. I know it did with me and my family and everyone I know that partake in the program. So, pretty much I want to start bringing some changes to Afton. Unfortunately, we were unable to get interviews with these candidates due to a variety of reasons. During the Afton candidate meet and greet, candidates from Cherokee Nation District 10 were also present. We also asked them why they were running for office. I have a heart for my people. And, uh, you know, my great grandpa was full blood Cherokee. He only spoke Cherokee to me, so I grew up with those roots. Um, you know, I didn't know that there was anything besides Cherokee Nation because I'm from Jay and uh, we're, you know, 90% Cherokee there. Um, I 
have a nonprofit that I run. I'm a public school educator. I've been in education for 17 years as a classroom teacher, and also now I'm an administrator. Um, I have worked with every facet of Indian education that you could think of through the public school system. I've helped with, um, you know, registering children to get their CDIB cards. I've helped with Impact Aid. I worked with our title coordinator through the school financial. Um, helping with all the financials and everything and um, work very closely with all the tribal councils in our area, Mike Shambal and Harley Buzzard. Uh, through this last year, we did every food distribution that Cherokee offered there at Jay. And most of the time, it was just my husband and I available to unload the boxes. So we started in March of spring break last year, one year ago today, and sometimes two or three uh, distributions a week. And we went all the way up until uh, December of that year, or December of 2020 doing that. Um, we also organize uh, shoe drives. We've done that for, for the past five years, I think it was. Um, we started out with 20, 30 pairs of shoes. The last time we bought over 200 pairs of shoes for kids to go back to school. Every year we organize coat drives for local students. Um, we uh, do the backpack program through our organization. Um, we also are, so we hygiene products, anything kids need to be successful. And I also like to help the elders in my community. I believe the true uh, job of a tribal counselor is to be the voice of the people. And that's what I would love the opportunity to do as the next District 10 tribal counselor. This is a chance for me to continue my work with Cherokee people. For 35 years, I worked with Indian Education at Grove Schools, at first as an Indian counselor, and then as the Indian Education Director. So my programs have won national and state awards. We were recognized nationally for the National Johnson O'Malley Award. And so I have experience working with um, budgets, writing grants, working with Impact Aid, working with other tribes, because my school district had 36 other, I believe, 36 other tribes besides Cherokee there, so I worked with all of them. So I can work with other people, and I would like to serve the Cherokee people through my service, community service, just basically to make their lives better, whatever it involves, whether it's education, whether it's health care, whether it's help for the elderly, whether it's help for housing, any of those areas, I'm free to um, listen to everyone their concerns and also give me a call anytime that you'd like to visit with me. Again, I'm John Ann Masters Thompson and I would love to serve as the District 10 representative. I'm running for council to be a bridge between the Cherokee people, the citizens, and the legislative branch. Um, I want to be a representative. I don't want to be considered a politician. So I want to reach the people who have been out there who haven't been given a chance to have a voice. And we're here for that. In addition to these three candidates, three others were are also on the ballot. They are Dennis Ackley, Daryl Hicks, and Melvina Shotpouch. And the Cherokee Nation Election Commission will be conducting the 2021 general election on Saturday, June 5th, 2021. The open tribal council seats are districts 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 10, 11, 15, and one at large council seat. And we will uh, voter registration uh, deadline for the 2021 election, uh, uh, general election was on March 31st, 2021, and the absentee ballot request deadline for the 2021 election, general election is on April 16th. To learn more, you can visit election.cherokee.org. As we're discussing elections, here are the folks running for Board of Trustee in Farallon on April 6th. Lisa Jewett, Kelly Shelton, Trevor Berger, and Dylan Bunch. Miami's in Ward 3 will have a choice of three candidates on the April 6th ballot. And they are Dwayne Sundberg, Justin Addis, Eric W. Bridges. The town of Quapa residents will also have a choice of two candidates in their April 6th election, Lee Edward Lyle and Charlie L. Daniels. Again, Woodruff Media Management will be covering Afton and other town elections as ballots are counted starting on 
uh, starting at 6 p.m. If you are a candidate on any of these elections, you're welcome to stop by our set at the w Miami Regional Chamber of Commerce and talk with us live. You can feel free to give us a call ahead of time, 918-544-6194 to give us a heads up. Like clockwork, each March, the Miami Sanitation Department hits the streets and collects the results of the community's annual spring cleaning. According to solid waste manager Kevin Horn, over 425 tons was collected. If you missed your chance for free pickup, need not worry, you can still deliver it to the City Sanitation Department each Saturday between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. There is a minimum of $5 charge for up to 200 pounds for Miami a trash service customers. For more information, you can call 918-541-2368. On Saturday, March 27th, Wyandotte First Baptist Church hosted Meet and Treat, a free community barbecue in honor of emergency responders in the community. Wyandotte Mayor Leon Crow explains how plans for this event unfolded. Well, we were approached by uh, Commissioner Chastain about uh, hosting or them hosting the uh, event to honor first responders of Ottawa County uh, Fire, Police, EMS, and uh, he put Steve pretty much uh, put this together along with the church here and stuff, just to show an appreciation back to uh, what we do every day for the community. It's their way of saying thanks to the Fire, EMS, and, and police officers. Uh, you know, our, our guys go out all the time. And, uh, do, horrendous uh, things and horrendous activities and to have a day that they get on is pretty, pretty sweet. It's great to see everybody come together, uh, show recognition to the guys that work hard and, and volunteer to, to help the community and uh, it's just great to see everybody coming together and pulling together to put this event on. Thank the church and Commissioner Chastain and the mayor. It's just a great event. I'd like to see it happen every year. Hey, I'm just glad to be uh, a part of it today and you know uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Chastine invited me to come and so uh, you know it's just an honor to be here uh, for this event where we honor uh, those first responders, our emergency personnel, uh, which is so important to our community and uh, you know sometimes uh, they goes unnoticed uh, but today has been set aside to honor them and uh, I'm just honored here, honored to be here with them. Later in the day, certificates of appreciation were given to area agencies that provided emergency services throughout the year. In the past month or so, we've been talking about our upcoming Facebook Live fundraiser for CASA of Northeast Oklahoma. In addition to this event, area businesses and individuals have a fun opportunity to also help put a face on the work CASA does for area children. Melissa Barnes with CASA of Northeast Oklahoma explains. So April is Child Abuse Prevention Month and child abuse is kind of a difficult subject to talk about um, but it is a sad reality for a lot of kiddos in our community and in every community. So we wanted to come up with a way, of a fun way, uh, that the community could get involved and to bring some awareness. So. We've came up with the paper doll project and you'll see our, some of our little paper dolls in the background. Um, this is an opportunity for businesses, churches, civic groups, individuals, anyone really, uh, to sponsor a paper doll. And so what that means is uh, when someone sponsors a paper doll, we're asking them to basically foster the doll for the month of April. And so that means uh, you will dress the doll and display it uh, in your place of business, home, church, uh, for the month of April. And then on April 30th, we're asking everyone to bring their paper dolls back down so we can display them on the courthouse lawn all day and into the evening uh, for our CASA's Cherish the Children Cruise Night. So this is a fun event. Michael's going to be helping us with, with this event that night. So it's going to be our kickoff to summer for Miami, Oklahoma, and you do not want to miss this. So we have different sp sponsorship levels. Uh, individuals can fo foster a paper doll for a hundred dollars. Uh, businesses and uh, churches, organizations can 
buy in at the $300 level, there's a $500 level or a $1,000 level. Ultimately, we want um, awareness. So we will, we will strike a deal <laughs> and we just want everyone to participate who wants to participate. Uh, so we're gonna have a good old fashioned Dragon Main, cruising Main Street. Uh, we're going to have a car show, and the car show is actually going to be the sidelines for our cruise night. They're going to line both sides of Main Street. Um, and then over at the courthouse, we will have food trucks. Um, we have uh, several amazing food trucks going to be here. Uh, we're going to have a live band, maybe even a couple live bands. You're not going to want to miss Michael Hart, who is going to be our MC. Uh, he's a fun guy, and it, it is just going to be a blast. Uh, we're also going to have booths available. Uh, a lot of our um, service providers and resources that help our families and children get through uh, their case will be there to uh, just let everyone know in the community what is available, what resources we have to help out our families. Uh, I know DHS will be there recruiting for foster homes, so if that's something that is on your heart to do, we absolutely need foster homes. Uh, CASA will have a booth. Uh, maybe you might think about volunteering for CASA and, and be a voice for these uh, children that are most vulnerable com community members. You can go to our website. It's www.casaneok.org. You can go to our Facebook page. It's at Casa NEOK. You can call our office, 918-544-6452. Or you can stop by. We're at 103 East Central Avenue uh, here in Miami, Oklahoma. We're on the corner in the St. James Building across from the courthouse. Coming up after the break, we'll have some advice on how to get a better paying job. Until then, here are some events happening throughout the community. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the door. Where's all the people? Well, technically, we don't have a steeple, but we do have people. People who love you just the way you are. Visit our Facebook page for our evening inspiration and our Sunday service, Unity of Joplin. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, my goodness, it is just a little windy out here. Back in April last year, the communities worldwide issued lockdowns in order to lower the infection curve of the COVID-19 pandemic. While this gave healthcare and government agencies and other services time to organize, it affected employment numbers. In Oklahoma alone, the employment rate went from an average of 4% to 13%. While this number has returned to 4%, many employers are eager to get back to work or expand, and they are hiring. Unfortunately, many of these jobs are going unfilled, and while there are a variety of reasons why folks may not want to enter or return to the workforce, we thought it'd be helpful to talk with a local employment service and get some tips on what people need to get a job. Um, I think the, some of the best tips for getting a job, um, the first one is going to be, um, you know, communication. Um, communication is a huge deal, um, especially coming in here um, at Penn Mac, um, you know, trying to tell us what kind of job you're interested in. Um, we focus ma mainly on industrial type positions here, um, but being able to communicate if that is something that you're interested in is a huge thing with us. Um, another one um, would be teamwork. Um, teamwork is huge. Um, if you can go into an industrial setting and show us that you have the ability to be able to work as a team, um, especially at some of our warehouses, you know, if you can go in and you can work with some of the other individuals that we have, um, that is a huge deal. Um, being able to go in and work with other individuals is just something that you really need to, need to be able to do. Um, so um, some of the other ones is um, just time management is something that, you know, is something that is just a, a big ability that is just something that we need to have people that, that need to be able to have management. Because if you go into a job and say you go to your break and, you know, you stay an extra five minutes, it might not affect you that bad, but that extra five minutes is going to affect the end of the day, you know. And if you do that every day, 
that's really going to affect and if you do that on every break and you do that on three of your breaks that's 15 minutes you know and to you 15 minutes may not be a big deal but 15 minutes adds up every week you know so that's a that's a huge deal especially in an industrial position so time management is something else that's really big um, leadership um, leadership is something that we really look for um, in work um, if you can go into especially I keep saying industrial positions because that's something that we focus on here at Penn Mac um, so if you can go in and you have a leadership ability that is something huge um, leadership is what when we say leadership we mean like going in and having the ability to see somebody that maybe isn't able to step up to the job quite like we expect and you see that someone is struggling and you just maybe go over and just say hey you know I see that you're struggling but this is the way that I do it and this seems to help me a little bit you know and you just maybe step up and help them with that you know and that may not seem like a big deal to you but to them that's a huge huge responsibility and it's a big deal you know leadership we need that we need that and that's not something that we see in a lot of people because a lot of people are just scared to step up you know they have that ability inside them but they don't they just don't step up because they don't think that they can but that's something that we look forward to and a lot of our places are looking for leads and if they see that in somebody then they are then they're you know that's how you can move up that chain of command and that's what we look for in a lot of our people so skills is something also that we look for and that kind of goes along with resume building um, when people come in to the office um, whenever they get to that part on the re on the application because we do build a resume off of our application so when they get to that part they always they're always like you know we'll just put one skill um, and that's awesome one skill is good but most people do have more than just one skill um, and you know it may just be that you know whenever they were 16 maybe they worked at McDonald's maybe they worked at Marvin's you know but you build more than one skill when you work at those places and the more skills that you put on a resume the better because you want to build your resume to be the best you you know you're for lack of better words you're selling yourself you know you're making yourself look the best that you can and the more skills that you add onto a resume the better that you look you know and you know your resume is your one chance to look for that company to look at you and be like wow you know that person is outstanding this resume is great and that's your one chance to make yourself look awesome to this company and so the more skills that you do have the better you're gonna look you know and skills can be things even as little as a hobby you know because being you know things like woodworking that might be a hobby to you but if you can sit down and you can do small things like work with wood with your hands then you can do things at discovery plastics you can do things at scepter because that can transfer over to working with with your hands so you know things that are small to you are things that we look for in an employee coming up after the break we will let you know about what we are planning on doing next week Welcome back, everyone. Next week, we will not be having a uh, community focus update because of our coverage of the uh, Ottawa County votes and all the elections that are going around uh, the county. So we want to invite you to visit us and watch us live on that time at 6 p.m. Well, that is it for this week's program of the community focus update. Be sure to like and share our page, Woodruff Media Management. You can even visit our website, woodruffmediamanagement.com, and become a member of our email group. You will get to see uh, those transcripts that we talk about frequently, and also other pieces of information that we have in regard to uh, well, marketing as well as uh, other news around the state and in um, Ottawa County. Well, thank you again for watching. We will see you next week.